In this video, you will learn how to use two functions from the deployer package called bind rows and bind calls to combine data frames. Once again, we will be using the happy data frame in this video, and as a reminder, here's what it looks like. The first function bind rows works as the name suggests. It takes two data frames and simply places one on top of the other. To see how this works, let's first split the happy data frame by row into two smaller data frames meaning that both resulting data frames will have the same number of columns. We can do this by using the slice function. The first data frame is called happy row 1, which looks like this, and the second is called happy row 2, which looks like this. We can supply these two data frames to bind rows like this, and we get back our original data frame. So we can see how this function is literally binding the rows of these two data frames. Note that order matters. If we switch the order of the two data frames so that happy row 2 comes first, we don't get back the happy data frame. Although we've produced a complete data frame, the row order is wrong. If you would like the resulting data frame to have a record of which row came from which original data frame, then you can set the dot ID parameter to equal some name, like original DF in this case. We see that this produces a data frame whose first column is original DF and contains a 1 if that row came from the first data frame and a 2 if it came from the second one. Bind rows can work even if the two data frames don't have the same number of columns. To demonstrate this, let's first remove the social support column from the happy row 2 data frame and save this as a new data frame called happy row 2 cut. Looking at the output, we confirm that the social support column has been removed. Now, when we apply bind rows to happy row 1 and happy row 2 cut, we get this data frame. You can see that, that since the second data frame didn't have a social support column, this column just gets filled with NAs for rows that came from this data frame. Let's now take a look at bind calls. This time, Let's again split the happy data frame into two smaller data frames, but by column. For this, we will use the select function. We produce one data frame called happy call one that contains the first two columns of the happy data frame, and another data frame called happy call two that contains the second two columns from the happy data frame. We see that the syntax for bind calls is just like the one for bind rows, and we end up with a data frame that is identical to the happy data frame. Again, just as with bind rows, order matters. Can you use bind calls on two data frames if they don't have the same number of rows? To see if this is possible, let's first remove the last row from happy call 2 and save the output as happy call 2 cut, which looks like this, a data frame with four rows. We see that if we try to apply bind calls to these two data frames with unequal row numbers, R gives us this error message. So to use bind calls, you must ensure that both data frames have the same number of rows. You might be wondering how bind calls is different from the join functions. One big difference is that in the case of bind calls, you don't have to have at least one column be in common between the two data frames. Also note that if you do use this function, make sure that the row order in one data frame equals the row order in the second data frame. Meaning that, for example, if the first row of the first data frame contains information about Iraq, then the second row of the second data frame must also contain information about Iraq, and so on. If you, by mistake, rearrange the row order for one or both data frames, bind calls will still work so long as the row numbers are equal, thereby producing incorrect output. There you go. You now know how to use the very useful bind rows and bind calls functions from the deployer package.